Okay, so a very good evening to all of you. Today we are going to discuss another topic in developmental disturbances in the shape of the teeth, which is gemination, fusion, twinning, and concrescence. It's a micro teaching lecture with high yield points for INICET, NEET, MDS, or university exams, as well as um, INBD. So if you want to uh, solve these questions, you can head straight to the end of the video. The timestamps will be provided in the description. Anyhow, the questions that we're going to discuss in the end are about gemination, fusion and concrescence. So getting right into the topic, what is gemination? When you think of gemination, I want you to remember the zodiac sign Gemini. Now this is a star sign which represents twins. So the same thing happens in our teeth. Now what happens in twins is there is one fertilized egg which gives rise to two identical individuals. So this is how we are going to remember gemination. First we remember gemination comes from the word Gemini. Gemini is a zodiac sign for twins. Twins come from one fertilized egg. So the same thing happens here. Geminated teeth are anomalies which arise from an attempt at division of a single tooth germ by invagination which results in incomplete formation of two teeth. So here you have one tooth germ which tries to divide into two teeth that gives rise to incomplete formation of two teeth. As you can see in this picture, this has arised from one tooth bud and there is a slight notch in the incisal tip because this tooth tried to separate into two teeth. As you can see in this diagram again, this is your maxillary central incisor. There is a slight notch in the incisal region which is an attempt of the tooth to divide into two. So one tooth bud splits into two, there is incomplete formation of two teeth. It affects deciduous and permanent teeth, it may be hereditary. It's hard to differentiate versus fusion. This we are going to see in a bit. And it's usually seen in the anterior region. So it's commonly present in the anterior segment of your teeth. If the tooth count is normal, it represents gemination. So as you can see here, this is your central incisor, lateral incisor. This is again your central incisor and you have your lateral incisor. This means that there is and then you have your canines. So this means there are six teeth in the anterior segment. Your tooth count is completely normal in gemination. It's just one tooth which is larger than it should be. Now, as we spoke, you have one tooth germ which is trying to divide into two, but there is incomplete division. Again, in this diagram, there is one tooth but trying to divide into two and there is incomplete division. Now say there is complete division, that is uh, it completely divides giving rise to two identical teeth, that is called twinning. So complete gemination giving rise to one extra tooth in the arch or a supernumerary tooth is called twinning. Coming to fusion. Now when you think of fusion, what comes to your mind? It's always two things coming towards each other. So as you can see this diagram, you have two different things coming together. This is the same thing that happens in the sun, which gives rise to energy. So you have two different objects that come together and fuse together. So again, fused teeth arise through the union of two normally separated tooth germs. And depending on the stage of development, there may be complete or incomplete fusion. So again, you have two tooth buds that come together giving rise to one tooth. Two tooth buds coming together and giving rise to one tooth. This occurs due to some physical force or pressure and their subsequent fusion. Now if there is an early contact before calcification there is a complete fusion. If it occurs late after crown formation there is only root fusion. And the dentin always merges. Root canal may be fused or separate. So what they're trying to say is, if the fusion occurs in the early stage, there is complete fusion. So this is how it looks. If it occurs after crown development, 
then you have two different crowns and uh, only root fusion. In both the cases, the dentin merges. However, the root canal may be fused or separate. So here uh, you might have a single root canal, whereas in this case you might have two root canals. Again, when we look at this diagram, you have your central incisor, lateral incisor, canine, central incisor, lateral incisor, canine. Because your central incisor and lateral incisor have fused together, there is going to be less number of teeth in the arch. The same thing is happening here. There is fusion of the central and lateral incisor. When you look at the radiograph, you can see that there is a uh, evidence of dentin contact and in this case also the pulp chamber and your root canal is also fused. So <coughs> let's look at the points. Two tooth buds are joined together. There is evidence of dentin contact as you can see here. The teeth appear large. It appears as a microdont larger than normal. Usually with two root canals or it may be fused. So in this case the root the two teeth have come together at a stage which is early. So there is complete fusion of both the crown and the root and there is also fusion of your root canal. It's usually seen in the incisor region. It's more common in deciduous teeth and the tooth count may be reduced because obviously instead of having six teeth in the anterior segment, you now have only four. The exception to this is the presence of a supernumerary tooth. So if you look at this diagram, you have your central incisor, you have your canine. And then you have your lateral incisor. The fusion is actually occurring between the lateral incisor and the supernumerary tooth. So in this case, the number of teeth in the arch are normal. Coming to concrescence. C for concrescence, C for cementum. So basically concrescence occurs, it's a type of fusion where the root formation is complete and the teeth are united only by cementum. So as you can see this picture, you have two complete teeth, you have complete root formation and then these two teeth have uh, combined together because of cementum. So they are united by cementum. Why this occurs may be because of trauma or crowding. Uh, the thing that you need to remember with this is there is difficulty in extraction and accidental extraction of the normal teeth. So if these two teeth are at the same level and if you've not taken an x-ray uh, before extracting it, you might accidentally extract both the teeth. So that is a clinical consideration. Apart from that, clinical considerations for germination and fusion, they include that these teeth are unesthetic because of irregular morphology so as you can see in this picture it's not giving a very good appearance to have this in the anterior segment there is a high predisposition to caries and periodontal disease so what happens is these teeth they have these notches fissures grooves that uh, are very susceptible to caries also if they extend subgingivally there is plaque accumulation that will give rise to periodontal disease. Also, when you think of gemination, you know that it's one tooth part that's giving rise to two teeth. So instead of having one tooth, you now need space for two teeth. So this leads to problems in alignment, interdigitation and arch symmetry. This will also lead to, it may lead to delayed eruption of the adjacent teeth. What is the treatment for all of this? For uh, the deep fissures and grooves, you can apply resin sealants and prevent caries from entering there. A tip to differentiate this, uh, normally in the cases of fusion, there's one less teeth in the arch. In germination, there's a normal number of teeth, but it's not always true as in the case of supernumerary teeth. Apart from that, germination, the teeth usually appear identical to each other like twins. And there might just be a small notching, whereas in fusion, it might fuse at a angle. So you can identify that it's fusion. So to summarize what we have spoken so far, 
For gemination, remember, it comes from the zodiac sign Gemini. Gemini represents twins. Twins come from one egg. So the same way, gemination occurs from one single tooth bud. This attempts to divide. If the attempt is unsuccessful, there is partial formation of two teeth, incomplete formation of two teeth. That is called gemination. If there is complete separation of the teeth, it's called twinning. Coming to fusion, you will remember that it's two things fusing together because of external force. So you have two tooth germs that fuse together. The, it fuses with the dentine and the pulp and root canal may or may not fuse. When you think of concrescence, C for concrescence, C for When you think of concrescence, C for cementum and C for concrescence. So this happens after complete uh, root formation. The two teeth come together because of uh, crowding or some trauma and they are fused together in the root area by cementum. Now let's solve the questions that we had seen earlier in the video. Gemination is characterized by which of the following? So is it a normal number of teeth in the arch? Yes, because it occurs from one tooth bud, giving rise to incomplete formation of two teeth. Union of adjacent tooth buds? No, this is called fusion. Presence of a single root and root canal? Yes. Presence of two identical separated teeth? No, this is twinning. So the correct answer in this case is A and C. What is fusion? As we know, fusion, two tooth buds come together. So the correct answer is B. Which of the following compulsorily involves two teeth? Is it dilaceration? No. Is it gemination? No. Torodontism? No. Concrescence? Yes. So you have two roots, they come together and they fuse through cementum. So union of roots of adjacent teeth through cementum, it's referred to as concrescence. So with this, we come to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. And for more such videos, you can check out the channel Oral Pathology and the playlist Developmental Disturbances of the Tooth. Thank you and have a good day.